Gentlemen, hello, a big welcome to you, welcome to Ensk. Here we are in the M41, yeah, Grand Finals, the M41-90, this is Tank Knight, until now I did not have an ace in. Spoiler alert, we are in a tier 10 game on Ensk, which as we know is the best light tank map in the game. What I am going to cover in this gameplay is light tank gameplay. I'm going to cover the general attitude that I take to light tank gameplay, and we're also going to look at how you should play a light tank in a city game specifically. But, before we get in, into any of that, I want to give you probably the best advice you will ever hear about light tanks in the world of tanks. And this is a rule that I apply to every single game I've ever played since I obtained knowledge of this fact. So... The one thing that is on your side in a light tank is time. And I'll explain that if, if my head would formulate the idea temporarily. Come on! I'm going back to sea horses again! Okay. Um, time is on your side in the light tank because wargaming gives you no other advantages. Maps don't appeal to light tanks anymore due to them removing cover. Light tanks have what that are the mediums they have the same matchmaking as mediums i won't go into that now but light tanks have very very few advantages anymore especially when getting into tier 10 games on maps that do not appeal to them whatsoever the rule of time for light tanks is something you should never stop thinking about and the rule is let's look at the map right now at the start of any game in your light tank there are a few things that are certain and where people are going to go, how people are going to play, those are the things that you use your skill as a player to analyse. What you can be certain of is that there are 15 tanks within the south, the east, the north, the west, wherever the enemy's spawn point is, there are 15 tanks right there. You can use that to your advantage, because at the start of the game, you know that those 15 tanks are going to disperse. How evenly doesn't matter. There are going to be 15 tanks towards wherever that spawn is. And for a light tank player, your job, however however tense you might be when getting in the light tank, you're thinking, okay, I've got to get out there, spot for my tank. No, you don't. It is not your job to make a game happen in a light tank. It's not your job to go out there and pass a scout. And, and I... Some people, when they're learning about light tanks, they feel like they have this responsibility in their light tanks. It's not the case at all. It's your team's responsibility to make something happen for you. At the start of the game, if you overcommit in your light tanks, you're dead. If you play too aggressively, you're dead. You should not do it in your light tanks. Your light tanks are predators. They are ambush vehicles, and they become more and more deadly the longer the game goes on because of that time rule. And the reason that time is so important is because 15 tanks, as I say, in one corner of the map. As a light tank player, you are looking for holes in the enemy team's lineup. There were weaknesses that you can exploit to pressure their arty, to pressure the near the engagement, to put cap pressure up. All of those are options that can make you a deadly light tank player. But they don't open up when there's 15 tanks. Because lines of fire are covered. Your job in the light tank, the most important thing you can do, is keep yourself alive. Because as the game goes on, as time goes on, those tanks will start getting ticked off the board. They'll start getting scratched off the map. And as that happens, as more and more of these lines become open, you have more and more potential as a light tank. You have more and more opportunities. So don't rush up and pass his scout, don't, don't try and play too aggressively, wait, watch the map for an opportunity, be vigilant, run around behind your team, play carefully, and wait for your opportunity, because light tanks become deadlier and deadlier, and you want most of your hit points, you want that, that glut of hit points that, that you may have, that, that is not a lot, but at the end of the game it's going to be more than the enemies, so... You want to keep those hit points, because at the end of the game is where you usually come into your element. There are some exceptions, some maps that are better for passive scouting, but for the current meta of the game with light tanks, it, it really is the case that you just got to keep yourself safe and wait for an opportunity. Of course, the curse of that is that people just... 
people get pissed off at you, for one thing. Um, but they're morons and don't listen to them. Um, and sometimes, in World of Tanks, I'll say sometimes, a lot of the time, light tanks cannot do anything. That is the curse. That's, that's the waiver that you sign when you get into a light tank. As I say, it's not your job to make a play. You shouldn't feel responsibility for your team in a light tank because it is up to your team to do well enough that you can help them out, that you can return the favour, that you can find an opportunity to do something. As you can see here, I'm just playing carefully. Passively, I'm getting what I can, I'm not overextending and I'm waiting. I'm keeping myself alive, keeping myself in a position, I'm watching the map, looking at my opportunity, I know that we've won the 9 0 line. what am I gonna do? I'm, I'm waiting to see if I can get an opportunity, I'm using my team, that Yak comes going up, I'm trying to give him support, but I am keeping myself safe, and this is the most important thing you can do, I'll say it over and over again, 704 secures the kill on Yak Panther, so I think I can go for the fire. Now, at this point, I know that we've won the 9 0 line. And this should be an advantage that you should not overlook in your light tanks because everyone else will be doing stuff. Every other class of vehicle, your mediums, your heavies, the TDs, they're gonna do stuff. They're gonna be yellowing out, they're gonna have stuff to shoot at. If you're waiting at the back, eyes on the map, you're gonna see stuff quicker. You're going to know where your team is, where your lines of fire support are, and what the best manoeuvre is to do. So, I know that our 9 single line is clear, and I'm not going to run into any opponents over there. Now, I've got the 430 who's moving up. He's going to move into there to get behind these guys. In this situation, if I'm going to get down here with the 9 7 and the 7 4 up here, there's no way I get out once I go past the 5 line. It, it, the opportunity would just close off, and in this melee... Everyone's going to shoot at me because I'm the easiest to take out. I am dead if I continue any further towards the west of this map. So knowing that, I turn around and I know that this 430 is pressuring me. But I'm going to have to take the risk going in front of those guys to see if I can get out. So I don't overcommit. And I can stay on the edges and keep myself safe waiting for an opportunity. Which is right now. That 430 is a good player. He's going to know that he has bigger priorities than me. And so, I'm going to show him that I'm still here. I'm a bother. There are tanks being scratched off the map right now. There, there are things that I can do in my light tank. I can become valuable right now because the game state has progressed that way. Never make moves too early in your light tanks. Your, your job is to be patient. It's to wait for an opportunity when you are valuable. Because you get opportunities like this. That E4 would be dead right now if it weren't for me taking this 907 off of its ass. And the Archie takes him down. The E4 goes down anyway, but the point still stands. I was able to relieve pressure from my team. And now we've got a 620 scoreline. I'll take out the bus with a heat shell and go back to AP from the Spark Panzer. Now the enemy have won the t one two line with that four thirty in behind as we anticipated earlier, but our team are coming in from the east and are sweeping from their cap and not putting cap in a sharp, which is a debatable decision. But now, again, I don't want to overcommit. I did think about helping that Yankinson, but if I go in there, there's just no way I survive. I mean, I can run away again, but what's the point in that? I might as well just hold my position here and focus up on the engagement right here. Our Type 4 Heavy and T41 are moving in. Now those are my best opportunities to win the game. They're my... The, the tanks on my team that are the most healthy, they're the highest tier. I'll, yeah, and that's something you want to do when you're in the light tank too, when you're in an end game situation. Consider where you are most likely to win the game. Consider what you need to enforce as a light tank. What needs a separate angle? What engagement right now is more important? That Yak Panzer that's tier 10 and surrounded and dead with that E50? No, I've got to get into a position where I can support the engagement that my team are about to make because that's going to be the most important one that results in us either winning or losing this game. So, I can get to a separate angle here and see if I can put any supporting fire out into the enemy team. Now, I know if I pop out again, I'm a light tank, they're going to shoot me immediately, so I'm not going to pop around that corner again. And I move to this corner to 
bite to people at like fourth of the Euro good enough to anticipate that I was going to pop out on there next. And then I head back to this corner because it's most likely that if someone were to be the aimed, they'd be the aimed on that corner. Now I can see my Chief 41 moving up. We've got the Mule 15 coming up from the south. Now he's in the crossfire distracting T10. I run across there to see if the Chief 32 or something is still playing. Yeah, maybe get an early spot for our Chief 41, but no luck. Now the 430 one is drawn onto that Yak Panzer in the corner. He's going to go down in a minute, but he's doing a hell of a job of holding him back. Now at this point we can use that distraction as an opportunity to get in. Now I know that the T41 with the 105mm auto loader is going to take the kill on that L103, so I can show the Chief 32 while I can. Go for the drag wheel here, there's something you can always do in light tanks. Uh, if I hadn't done that, uh, it would have face up the number 15, made this day a bit more difficult. Plus, when you're in the light tank, it's good to take the tracking shots when you're surrounded by your team because the vast majority of light tanks do not have the DPM of the tanks they're going to be playing with. You're going to be playing with tier 9s and 10s. They will outmatch you for DPM in the vast majority of your light tanks. That means you're going to get more XP for tracking an opponent than you will for your actual damage to them. And assistance damage does count for a lot in a light tank. Alright. I have few fires and now I've got a 15 second reload. I see that RT in the corner. I didn't actually notice that he just killed the number 15 when I was playing this game, so I made sure to put a house between myself and the RT while I engage the ISU. Type 4 Heavy comes up behind, takes him out, and the RT seemed to get taken out by ours. There he goes. Big puff of smoke. That was beautiful. Alright, so very good 430 version 2 player. We are winning, but a player like that in a tank as deadly as that is still got a thousand hit points. He can easily turn this around. Now I'm looking at him on the map. He's going into that alleyway and he is definitely going to use this area right here to see if he can get any vision on where our team is going. So seeing that, I immediately pulled that behind cover, not wanting to tip him off to my location. Now our Archie's putting up Camp Pressure, which is a useful player at this point. Makes me happy to see an Archie player getting off his ass. Um, but let's talk, T41 is just committing so heavily. And then the light tank, as I say, your job isn't to commit. It's to anticipate. Your, your job is to wait for the opportunity. I know this Chief 41 is going to basically be a magnet for these enemy players here. And there's one of two things could happen. Either this 430 is going to commit on the Chief 41 there, in which case I can jump in and help him. But, a player like that, my mindset is keen on the idea that he's going to come around here. He's a medium tank. He knows he, he's a good player. He's got the ass thing there. He wants multiple angles on this guy. If if he gets there, and the ass thing is there, I've got two angles. The Chief 41 can't make an engagement, and the 430 and the ass thing can be able to double team him, and none of them will take a huge amount of damage for doing it. So that's why I play so passively going past this T10 right here, because I want to stay in a position where if that 430 outflanks, I'm going to be able to access his ass. If I overcommit... Oh, sorry, I just minimized my water tanks. That with. Oh, that was a good song. Okay. So if I overcommit, if I go to there or go to there, then the 430 is going to have all the reason and opportunity that he needs when he comes around there to outflank the T41 to engage me instead. And I can't beat a 430 in a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one fight. So I've got to take... I've got to be cautious. I've got to anticipate. It's my job in the light tank. So I'm holding up behind here. I'm putting the lines of cover between me and him. And then the T41 kills the ass me. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, if the 430 was going to outflank, you would have done it by now. And there he is. Okay, so... The 430 you must know, judging by the fact that the T41 killed the IS-20s, and they got 4 shells, 1560 clip potential. But the T41 either only has like 1 or 2 shells left, or is reloading for the next 40 seconds, I bet he's betting on the latter. So, this man is a very good player, I've got to give him some respect. If I commit on him, he is going to switch targets, he knows that T41's reloading, he knows he can kill him in 2 shots. If I engage him, He's going to switch and kill me in two shots and then just kill the Chief 41 and most likely he will win the game by doing that. In order to prevent that from happening, I need to make turn this into an engagement that I can dictate. That I can say, oh, you want to shoot me? Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to wait till you fight. And so, instead of going down the alleyway, obsessed with supporting Chief 41, I'm going to pull to the right here. 
and start putting shots into his side and get behind this building. And now, I have complete control over the engagement. As soon as he shoots up to 41, I can pop out to give supporting fire. But at no stage am I over committing. I know I've got the Type 4 Heavy coming up, so I can bait him into that if he does kill the T41 and then come after me. But at no point am I in any in any danger from him. I can still help him out with the engagement. But over committing, something you never want to do in your lights. And you can see the 430 does look at trying to engage me at a certain point in this engagement. But you can see the point of the gun slightly over my way, but just before the Type 4 Heavy picks him up. And done 20,000 damage in this tier 10 game on Ensk. I mean, 600 meter map, it doesn't exactly appeal to light tanks, but I mean, if you just stand by those rules as a light tank player, patience, anticipation, the rule of time. Wait for your opportunity and don't be skewed, don't be swayed by all these players that, that will type in chat, GET OUT THERE AND STOP! No, don't. Wait for your opportunity. Sometimes it won't come. Don't be discouraged where you get games where you don't do anything in your light tanks. Because the majority of your time, if you're trying, if your eyes are on your map, if you're waiting for an opportunity and you don't see one, most likely that there just wasn't one. And that is going to happen. It shouldn't discourage you. You have to play like this. I mean, this is just the way I've chosen to play in light tanks. It's the, it's the way that makes the most logical sense to me. And it's just something that works with the meta of light tanks as it currently stands. And this Spartans of 1C ain't gonna have a good day. <laughs> I can tell that you know, that much. So I'll charge you up to uh, just basically one shot below 4, 4k in this game. That was my first ace in the uh, Annex, uh, the uh, M41 Grand Finals, uh, which is a lovely tank, I must say. It's basically an RU251 that earns money. Uh, so, if you do get an opportunity to pick up one of these tanks, I fucking recommend it. Uh, it is the best tier 8 premium light tank. Um, so, yeah, gentlemen, I finally hope you've enjoyed the gameplay. I hope you got something out of it, do let me know if you have, and let me know your thoughts on light tank gameplay, what, what attitudes do you take to it, are you a passive scout player, do you have binos and a camera on your ELC, or do you have optics, uh, tell me about your light tank games, I'd be curious to know, um, gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and gentle beings, Lizzie, <laughs> farewell, see you, what <laughs> of Oh no! 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 Oh no!